Hey everybody, what is going on? Welcome to another Pygame tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is moving into 3D. So actually what we're going to start off doing is what's called pseudo 3D or uh, 2.5D for example. And so what is the difference first of all between real 3D and like pseudo 3D? So some sort of fake 3D. Well, Take for example if you are drawn on a piece of paper. So for example, let me bring up a uh, paint. And we draw a simple square with paint. So uh, like this, wow, beautiful. So we would say that's a 2D square with some edges. <laughs> and then, but if we go like this, once again, just brilliant artwork. Now suddenly, you know, we're saying that looks somewhat like a cube. I mean, use your imagination a little bit here, but yeah, it looks like a cube. Um, but it's actually 3D, or I mean, it's 2D. <laughs> it's not 3D. Um, and so what is the difference between this little cube and, say, looking at your screen at something that actually is 3D, like playing, you know, a new age video game like, um, like Battlefield or something like that? What makes that 3D? The difference is this... We can make Pi Game draw a cube just like this on the screen using you know four dots, connect the dots, and then draw four more dots, connect those dots to the original four, and it looks like a cube. It would be like a 3D cube. Of course, it would look more like this. Um, but still a cube, right? And we can do that within Pi Game right now, but it's still 2D. And the reason why it's 2D is we can't change perspective without changing a lot of formulas. So, and what I mean by that is is the iconic, you know, 3D example where you're looking at um, some sort of, uh, usually it's a cube, and you are spinning around the cube or the cube is just rotating on its own axis. It usually appears like the cube is rotating, but actually you are rotating in those examples. Um, and so that is what 3D is. It's, it's the full rendering of an actual environment. So you can change your view and perspective of that environment. Um, and, and it's not actually, it's, it's a 2D representation of that environment. By the end of the, at the end of the day, it still is shown on your computer screen, which is only 2D. But you're interacting in a 3D environment. So anyways, hopefully that's uh, at least somewhat clear to you, but that is the major difference between, you know, pseudo 3D and real 3D. At the end of the day, the actual image itself, you know, if you were to take a screenshot of a real 3D cube, like we'll make in, we'll, we will make a 3D cube in Pi Game, a real one, and then a pseudo 3D cube, if you just took a screenshot of them, you might not be able to be like, that is the real 3D cube, and that's the pseudo 3D. You wouldn't necessarily know. Um, so then the other question is, why would we defer? Like, why would we choose real 3D versus um, pseudo 3D? It just really depends. So once you pass a certain threshold of, like, 3D use, it might make a lot of sense to go ahead and do real 3D. Uh, so, for example, if you're making a first-person shooter like Call of Duty or Battlefield, and you need a bunch of players to interact with each other in one massive environment, doing like this, like 2D or pseudo 3D for each player would be probably more work than just making the 3D environment. So, anyways, with that, let's go ahead and get started, and we're going to do both pseudo 3D, and then we'll we'll uh, conclude this entire series with an actual 3D um, rendering and example. So this is our current code. It, I would suggest you go ahead and save some of the code just, just for your own notes. I'm going to go ahead and delete a huge chunk of this code, but first I'm going to go ahead and make the text a little smaller to speed up our time here. And really, uh, we'll keep colors for now, uh, but then when we start defining like tank width and all that, I'm just going to highlight that. Um, it's conceivable we use the fonts later. Uh, so I guess I'll leave those there. So I'm just going to delete all this. Now highlight this and continue scrolling down basically until we get to the main loop. So actually I'm just going to scroll and then game intro, game over, you win, health bars, and then we get to game loop. I'm going to hold shift click. That highlights everything. Delete. Um, now once we're in our game loop, um, we don't really need any of the, this stuff, really. 
And then I'm just going to change this to a while true statement. Uh, we don't need this game over stuff. We'll leave the event loop uh, for now. Um, we'll just leave a couple of key downs just so we have uh, the lo like. Um, what am I trying to say? We'll leave the key down so because we are going to eventually use key presses, so we might as well leave them there. I'm just going to put pass and pass there. Um, and then the rest of this stuff, we'll leave the key ups as well. And again, uh, we'll just do pass and pass. Pass and pass. And then we'll go ahead and delete all this. Game display dot fill white. Uh, we're gonna change that to black now. Health bars don't need any of that. Basically don't need anything all the way down to frames per second. And now we've got ourselves a nice cleaned up uh, thing. Got to get rid of the game intro here. Uh, let's get rid of some of this white space. And uh, we're ready, I think, hopefully. We'll find out really quick, though. Uh, we might have missed something. But let's go ahead and run that and make sure this is all clean. So we did get an error. FPS not defined. That's fine. We'll go ahead and define FPS as 30. Let's try again. And we're all set. OK. So uh, let's close out of this. Do we not have a quit event? Game exit equals true. We don't need that. Instead, we'll call this pygame.quit and then quit. Cool. OK. That worked. All right. Now we're ready. We've got a nice, um, nice empty script. We'll get rid of some of this stuff, too. And we'll replace tanks with 3D. And we don't really need these sounds anymore. Actually, well, yeah, we don't need those sounds. Um, OK. So our script is significantly cleaned up. So now what are we going to do? Well, first we're going to define, we're just going to make a simple square we're using logic and code that we've already done in the past. Make the square, connect the dots. We'll talk about moving the square. Zoom in, zoom out using pseudo 3D. My pseudo 3D code is not the most brilliant, but it'll give you an idea of what's required to make pseudo 3D. Um, mostly to talk you out of doing it <laughs> and talk you into you want to learn OpenGL. Um, but anyway, yeah, we'll get to that. So now that we've got a clean script, we're ready to start off uh, in the next video. So stay tuned for that, and thanks for watching.